Justice League Dark Apocalypse War is the brand new DC animated film hitting the digital marketplace this week. I'd actually been skipping these movies for a while now, but Superman Red Sun was interesting enough to get me back in, and once I heard that this movie was meant to be the big cap-off to this era in interconnected DC films, figured I had to give it a look. As the absolute mouthful of a title might tell you, the movie borrows its inspiration from the similarly named DC comic event Dark Side War, only after watching the movie I can say it doesn't really borrow all that much. In fact, there's probably just as much creative DNA in this movie from such stories as Trinity War or even the very dreaded Future's End of all things, if you can believe it. Now, like I mentioned before, this movie boasts being the grand culmination of all the continuity from the post-Flashpoint universe DC animated films, but if you're like me and have actually been watching and paying attention to these movies, then you probably realized a long time ago that canon was really an afterthought. Personally, I always felt they only decided to incorporate continuity this late into the creative life cycle of these movies so as they could try to have one consistent art style, maybe one consistent voice cast. That way they could pump the movies out quicker and cheaper, a goal which they didn't always reach. But a decision they were probably forced into after the budgets for these DVD movies started getting smaller and smaller after Justice League Flashpoint. But there is a silver lining if you're wondering to yourself if you need to binge watch all 15 of the other movies before you see this one. In truth, you really don't. At most, I would say you need to watch Son of Batman in the first Teen Titans movie, and you should be good. Outside that, all you really need is a basic knowledge of who these heroes are, and I figure if you're watching this movie now, then you most certainly have that. But what exactly is Justice League Dark Apocalypse War about? Well, as the story goes, Dark Side of the New Gods is ready to launch one final assault on Earth to conquer it. Superman, acting in a much more aggressive fashion than normal as a result of dying and coming back to life in his last solo movie, decides that the only way the heroes are going to win is by attacking first and attacking hard. One thing that really surprised me about this movie right out of the gate is that our POV ride-along character in this universe-spanning epic is none other than John Constantine of all people, the dark, I guess, in Justice League Dark. Matt Ryan continues to be as good as ever. And when you stop and consider this, and Legends of Tomorrow, and City of Demons, Constantine and Matt Ryan really have become one of the most valuable VIP players in the expanded DC universe. The hero's assault ends in a massive disaster as Darkseid has created a new army of hybrid parademons. Many heroes are lost or even killed while Earth itself is conquered. Flash forward a few years and Constantine is a drunken shell of his former self. Well, more drunken, still reeling from the final battle. And the one person he could not save. John gets a chance to redeem himself, though, when a kryptonite sick Superman and older, more gaunt Raven come seeking his help to save the world. And really, after that, the movie hits the ground running and does not stop. We go from scene to scene, picking up new heroes for the big final fight at the end. Now, I was actually a really big fan of Teen Titans vs. Justice League as a movie, so I was happy to see Raven and Damien not only get a fair amount of screen time here to develop themselves and their unique, complicated relationships, relationship, but I also think it's fair to say that Stuart Allen has done a really good job growing into the role of Damian Wayne. And perhaps one of the best things that this movie does is serve as the ultimate capstone for the Damian Wayne saga that began all the way back in Son of Batman. I wish I could say nicer things about the villain Darkseid, he doesn't really get much to do here. He glowers, he huffs and puffs, but the movie doesn't really have anything deeper for him to do or say outside of being your standard destroyer of worlds type villain. Once again, Michael Ironside's interpretation of the character for the Superman the Animated Series remains absolutely untouchable, both in terms of performance and quotability. In a very strange move, it's Darkseid's newest thrall, Batman on the Mobius chair, that actually gets far more time to interact with other characters than Darkseid does. Now, in the comics, when Batman sat on the Mobius chair, it gave him all the knowledge in the universe. Here, though, in this movie, though, it just kind of makes him evil, a bit of a missed opportunity. I actually kept waiting for the moment wherein Batman would try and overthrow Darkseid, but it never happened. He even ditches the Mobius chair for his big action scenes at the end of the movie, which makes me wonder what was even the point 
point of including the Mobius chair at all. Now, this movie actually had two directors, Matt Peters and Christina Soto, both veterans of the superhero genre, but honestly, I had a hard time locking down one particular style or vision. That's not to say there weren't a number of very interesting shots or sequences. I quite enjoyed Etrigan the Demon lazily beating up League of Shadows ninjas, only to be kicked in the face a bunch by Lady Shiva. There's also one particularly creative scene wherein a familiar alien planet gets doused in magma and the entire population flash fried. Writing duties were also shared this time around with Ernie Altbacker on screenplay and Margaret Scott on story. Both have impressive resumes with Scott actually being a comic writer as well as writing for TV and movies. Following her on Twitter, you'll know that she actually took credit for infusing the movie with a lot more humor. A welcome addition, especially given the oppressively dark apocalyptic tone of the movie. What am I talking about? Well, King Shark tries to steal the show with a verbal take very close to his comic counterpart. Great material is also mined from Constantine and Boomerang of the Suicide Squad being forced to work with one another, something that has never happened in the comics, but something I feel totally should have by now. Hayden Welch also returns as Harley Quinn and is given a number of very funny bits to do. She even quotes her Yahtzee line from Assault on Arkham, but wait, I thought that was in the video game continuity, and wait, isn't she also in Batman Harley Quinn, and isn't that in the animated series continuity, not these movies continuity? See what I mean about continuity being an afterthought here? On the animation and design front, Apocalypse War offers up a ton of very interesting aged up versions of your favorite heroes and villains, as well as several more who return for cameos. Now that's not to say the animation is not without its own hiccups. Once again, we get some clumsy integration of traditional hand-drawn animation along with CG animation, but thankfully it's only for one brief scene. In terms of content, this is another unrated DC feature very much not intended for children. They let the F-bomb fly multiple times, and most of the heroic cast is murdered in bloody and brutal fashion in just the first few minutes. Thankfully, though, unlike other installments in this animated universe, they don't veer into tasteless for tasteless sake territory like some of the other movies have. Or when they do decide to turn up the gore in the bad language, they at least have a story reason to do so, as the world is quite literally ending all around these characters. I still think Red Sun probably handled its mature content better than the last handful of these animated outings have, and I still believe that at the end of this movie. I do, however, wish, like Red Sun, this movie found some time for some slower, more introspective moments. The closest thing we get is a nice little B-plot involving Superman and Lois worrying about each other during the end of the world as they know it. I know it might seem minor, but it's moments like that that always push pretty good movies like this over into the really good territory. In summation, Justice League Dark Apocalypse War is a movie that throws damn near everything at the wall and sees what will stick, and a lot of it does. The action scenes are cool and creative, a number of the cast turn in pretty solid performances. As you would really hope considering that some of these people have been playing these characters for literal years now. And by the time it all ends, you certainly can't say that they didn't wring every last drop out of this universe. Then again, that might actually be my biggest problem with the movie. By the end of Act 3, I felt so tired and beaten up, just like the cast did. And when everyone eventually agrees to hit the cosmic reset button, I couldn't help but ask myself, really? It was all just for this, huh? Then again, I suppose you could say that about every time DC Comics does a major crisis story. If nothing else, though, this really does feel like them closing the book on this chapter of post-Flashpoint DC animated movies, and I really hope they take some time, maybe get some much-needed rest, and come back fully charged to hit us with some new movies, maybe with a completely different approach. Maybe they'll start adapting DC Rebirth-era stories, or maybe they'll go back to adapting classic DC stories. Either way, I'm excited to see what the future holds.